Teddy the Butcher sure is adorable, but there's not much use for NPCs if you can't interact with them. So this week, I implemented a dialogue system that will allow NPCs to talk to you, and you can also respond back to them. Howdy, and welcome to Game Endeavor, where I post weekly devlogs for my game Zoe and the Cursed Dreamer. I'm making a game where the NPCs that you encounter play a major role in the development of the game. You'll be interacting with them regularly and getting to know them on a personal level, and if you want, helping them solve their problems as they try to figure out what they want for themselves. In order for me to create this kind of interaction with the NPCs, I needed to create an interface that allows you, the player, to interact with them. Which means I need a dialogue system where the NPC can talk to the player, and the player can respond back. But there are so many things to consider with such a dialogue system, how flexible do I want it to be? Do I want to allow for branching paths? How will I handle such tasks as Teddy the Butcher giving you a handful of cookies, or moving items and coins from your inventory to pay for a special service? I'm going to need a rather powerful system if I want to make this game how I envision it. Without a solid dialogue system, then my game would feel bland and leave the player without much of a way to interact with the game. So I got to work putting together the foundation for my dialogue system. Now if you've been watching these devlogs so far, then you may have noticed that there are some text boxes in my previous videos, but these were just a ruse. They were never real. I mean, they exist, but they're just a shell of an actual system. In fact, I was manually passing in the dialogue for each of these clips recording the video and then moving on to the next one. I need a more flexible way to handle the dialogue, something that doesn't require most of my NPC code to consist of NPC greetings. I want to separate the dialogue script into its own file and let the NPC tell the game which file it should use to perform the dialogue scene. For this, I decided to go with JSON files. Godot is able to read in a JSON file and automatically import it as a dictionary, which makes it easier for me to access and read the data. I can use this to store what the NPC says to the player but also extra information for each section, such as who is speaking, the expression they're using while saying it, and what should happen in the game when they say it. I have defined all of these variables myself and assigned their function through the code. The speaker's ID lets me set a couple of things about the NPC that is currently speaking, this being their name and their portrait, which informs the player about who is speaking. This information is stored into a database that is global to the game, so interestingly enough I could change the values here and it would be permanent, so long as I reapply the data when loading the game. For example, in the live stream when we drew these portraits, we established that the butcher's name is Theodore, but everyone calls him Teddy. This is just an example, but I could set his name as Theodore when he is introduced, and then change it to Teddy after he explains this. The portraits are also stored here as well into the dictionary, which allows me to label each one to find easily later. In the JSON file, I can assign a specific portrait to play at the start of this text, which will display the NPC's current mood. This game will have a relationship system where your actions and what you say to the NPCs affects their disposition towards you. With this, I can make it so that they greet you differently depending on their mood by showing a different portrait. Teddy will always greet you eagerly though, because he is the embodiment of everything sweet and innocent. He could never be mad at you. I had a little bit of a meltdown over the text reveal though. Long, long ago, probably long before I even have a project for, I created a text reveal that I have been using up until now. It's not pretty, and honestly it doesn't even work sometimes, and worst of all, it could only be used on a regular label, but it was mine, I made it, and I was proud of it. I knew it was bad and that it needed replacing, so I decided to watch some other Godot YouTubers to see if they had gotten around to implementing this yet. So the first one I watched is Emilio and he just sucker punches me right in the back of the head with this percent visible variable. Like, what is this? How long has it been here and why am I just now finding out about it? It's literally the first and second variable in the inspector, and it's as simple as dragging a slider to the right. I mean, yeah, I can't expect the player to drag the slider in the game to reveal the text, but it's a step in the right direction. So armed with this newfound sacred knowledge, I set out to recreate my text reveal logic in a way that actually works properly. And it's really just as simple as creating a tween that interpolates the value between 0 and 1. The only thing to consider here is the timing, because if I have a piece of text that's 5 words long, and another that's a whole paragraph, and I set both of them to reveal in the same duration, then the shorter sentence is going to feel noticeably slower. To get a consistent time, all I needed to do was to divide the number of text characters by the number of characters that I want to reveal per second. I can get the number of characters by saying text.length because text is the plain text without any BB code tags. I'm using 45 characters per second at the moment, but I haven't set out to start tweaking this value yet. The best part about this new text reveal system is that I can now use this with rich text labels without any issues, which opens up the possibility for me to use BB code to spice up my text. By default, Godot provides several BB code effects out of the box, like shaking and colorful text, but even better, 
they give you the option to create your own BB code effects, which I look forward to doing. Not only can the NPCs talk to the player, but the player will have the option to respond back to them in certain situations. For this, I've created a special dialog box that allows the NPC to state their question or statement, and once this text has revealed, the player can then choose different options to advance the dialog. Within these answers, I can create special actions such as which dialog node we should progress to next, or even actions that we should take when this response is selected. For example, say the player is trying to haggle for a quest reward. They could choose a lower price that is guaranteed to succeed, or they can try for a more difficult option that requires a certain skill level. Both options advance to the same dialog node, but they have different actions resulting from them. These command sequences are what powers the dialog interactions in the world. They can be used to advance the progress for a quest, give the player items or coins, or even adjust the disposition of the character that you're talking to. These commands hook directly into a command handler, which I have created for this. Currently, I just have some very basic commands implemented, but there's also an interesting one that lets me set variables via commands. These aren't proper variables that get added to the engine, but they get stored as values in a dictionary which I can reference in the game. For example, once the player has talked to an NPC for the first time, I can set a variable that remembers that the NPC has been talked to. This is one of the more interesting features in the dialog system that opens up a lot of potential for the game. If you're talking to an NPC in the game, and you say a particular thing to them, I can create a variable to remember that response and reference it later to create an effect that is caused by that response. Maybe you mention to the witch Selena that you like milk and cookies, and later on, one day while you're sleeping, she breaks into your house and places a few of them in your socks, and a jug of milk in your bed beside you. There's a lot of fun that could be had with this. In this week's livestream, we made some portraits with the community so that I would have some visual eye candy for this devlog. I still have a lot of practice to do when it comes to portraits, but I'm getting there. Previously, I had drawn all of two pixel art portraits in my life, and they're both these recent ones of the witch. And as you can see, with a bit of perseverance and determination, you can make something at least half decent in the end. I'm still not happy with this one of the witch. She doesn't quite look like how I imagined her, but I'm getting better and that's the important bit that I'm after. I am pretty happy with how Teddy the Butcher came out though. There are still some tweaks that need to be made, but for the most part he looks about how I wanted him to. The community was a massive help in creating these portraits. They gave so many suggestions and helped me figure out how I wanted to draw the characters. Without them, these wouldn't have turned out nearly as good. As soon as I finished the stream, I was greeted with an amazing piece of fan art from someone that also drew portraits of the characters along with me. They even drew ears on both of the characters and I don't even want to know what kind of black magic was involved in this. They also went through the effort of creating various expressions and animations for the characters, like the witch when one of her spells backfires and blows up in her face. I stream here on YouTube every Tuesday, so if you want to join the community in helping us design and make this game, then be sure to join the sub club and dingling that bell to get notifications. I spent much of this week working on the story for this game, which means pretty soon we'll be designing the first dungeon and its boss, so I look forward to seeing you there.